Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of the Shack series. On this new episode, we've got Carla Buchanan coming on. She is an Australian dolphin swimmer uh, who competed at the 2016 and 2018 Shore Course World Championships uh, in Canada and also in China. Uh, in this episode, we'll be getting know, to know Carla a little bit more, uh, what she does, what she's studying, um, and also a little bit more about her family-run business that she's got called Pip and Me, spelled P-I-P-A-N-D-M-I. So stick around and get to know Carla a bit more. Hey, Carla. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Sorry. How are you going? Good, how are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. How was your morning? Uh, yeah, pretty tough. We had a 3K time trial this morning, so. <laughs> it's so different for everyone. Everyone I know has Friday morning recovery. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Do you have recovery tonight? Oh, we don't train tonight, so we have it all. Oh, yeah. that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. Thanks so much for taking the time out to come on on our little series that we've got going here. Um, yeah, very stoked to have you on. Just got a few questions uh, for you, pretty straightforward, just about your swimming career and kind of what you do. Um, so to get off first, uh, when did you start swimming and what was your earliest memory? Um, I started swimming oh, from like when I was a baby. My parents got me into it to, they just wanted me to learn how to swim pretty much. Um, and then kind of got into the school swimming once I started school. Um, with Sean at Moreton Bay. I went through their Learn to Swim program there. Um, yeah, kind of just took off th from there. My earliest memory though, well, I've been told that I never wanted to put my head under the water when I was little. I don't actually remember that, but apparently I was petrified of it. So it's pretty funny that I ended up still going when I hated it that much as a little kid. Um, but yeah, my earliest memory probably... Um, was like the first time I had to do a hundred fly in training. He, um, I was just so scared that I wasn't going to make it. And it was like about to storm that afternoon. And I couldn't even tell you how old I was, but I was pretty young. It was about to storm and I literally touched the wall and they like called it. They like got everyone out of the pool. Like there was lightning. And I was like, I, I just did a hundred fly. Like this couldn't have happened like a couple of minutes earlier and I wouldn't have had to do it. I was devastated. But yeah, anyway, that's my first memory of, <laughs> of swimming so you mentioned um you started out at Morton Bay so you've been there pretty much your whole swimming career you know all the way from learn to swim up to making the Australian Dolphins team which is pretty rare for an athlete to do um so why why did you stay there for so long um I think because I went to school the whole way through so while I was at school it was pretty convenient just to to walk down to the pool and start training so that was that was always very easy but I've always just really trusted in Sean as well and I've never really ever thought about going to a different program or a different coach I've always just believed in what we were doing together so never really had a reason to move or or to leave but yeah yeah and what's your favorite thing about swimming is it is it the competitive side that you really enjoy or is it the more social side that you like um, yeah, what is it specifically? Um, I definitely love the racing. I really love, well, when it's going well. <laughs> I love, um, like training's okay and I do enjoy the social side of it. But yeah, just getting to, um, to race and kind of prove all the hard work that you've put in. And yeah, it's always fun racing. It's just, especially like the, the trips you go away on and the teams and stuff, all of that kind of racing is, yeah, the bit that I really love. Yeah. Do you have a favourite event uh, that you've been to? So you've been on a lot of Australian teams um, and you've been on a World Cup series a few times, haven't you? Yeah. The World Cups yeah. were really good. Yeah, they were fun. I really yeah. enjoyed them and I swam well, which also helped. But yeah, they were really yeah good, quick little meets and got to see different um, different places, different countries. Yeah, they were really good. If you had to pick a favourite event that you've been to, what would it be and why? Um, I'd probably say World Short Course in Canada in 2016. Um, probably more so because it snowed and that was like so exciting that it, <laughs> that it snowed. We're all just stoked that we got to see it. So that was pretty cool. Plus it was my first open Australian team. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah it's just overall very special experience was that your first time seeing snow yeah properly i'd seen it at like threadbow like bits of ice but yeah. not actually like snowing so yeah yeah that was cool. <laughs> Uh, now, Swimming Australia has um, got a new Australian Swim League. Um, pretty much their first one was kind of like halfway between a trial slash real thing. Um, what were your thoughts on, on the event? Like, uh, do you have any pros and cons on how they ran the event or what you thought about it? Yeah, I, um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good to kind of start off with relays so that we were all kind of as a team. Um, yeah, I really liked it. And I grew up like going through school with QG Triple SA. So that was like um, kind of like the really competitive environment, all the team spirit, that kind of stuff, which was like my favorite part of school. So it's kind of heading in that direction, which I really think is, is important in swimming. And it just like getting up as a team, getting everyone going. Like, I think that was, that's really cool. The only thing, like, of course, I think it would be better if everybody could be together of course we had to do it virtually just with everything that's going on which is understandable but yeah apart from that it was yeah it was a good day it's good fun yeah yeah and no, it was he's fun it's he's of fun and um yeah i think it was a little bit uh unfair how the teams <laughs> were uh, based i mean i was on the winning team but i mean yeah it wasn't really fairly set out but <laughs> Um, so you're at university as well. Uh, first of all, what do you study? And um, secondly, how do you manage the training and study loads? Um, so I'm studying a Bachelor of Medical Lab Science. Um, so I started off with just a plain Bachelor of Science when I finished school. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and then, yeah, transferred over to that. So I've been doing that for quite a while. I'm quite old now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, managing it is just... Um, I just try to be really organized and really like time management. You kind of hear it all the time. It's really important, but it really does help if you can get on top of things early, um, get them started when you get them, if you can, and just, yeah, keep on top of it so that you're not stressed out of your mind when it's all due at, at one point at the end of semester. <laughs> we are very different students. I usually start it until I'm absolutely screwed. <laughs> <laughs> How far along into your course uh, are you and what do you plan on doing with the, with the degree after? Um, so I'm nearly finished. I only have placement left actually. So I've done all of the subjects that I can and I, I planned it out so that I could um, kind of have all my subjects done um, by the end of this year and then do placement next year after Olympics, Olympic trials was all done. And then of course, because of COVID, that's, that timing's kind of gone out the window. So yeah, I've only got placement left, which is good, but that'll interfere with training. So I've kind of just got to keep putting that off till I'm ready to, to, to be able to focus on that and kind of cut back on swimming a little bit. Um, but yeah, afterwards, I'm thinking of going into like transfusion um, science or like transplant science, the kind of the testing side of, of that with the degree. So yeah, wow. Interesting. Did you always want to do that or like, was there a, another avenue that you were going to take? Um, I just, I didn't really know, like even finishing school, I just had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, as I said, started that science degree and just heard about this course and just thought it was a bit more specific. And um, in first year, they take you on a tour of the lab and all the different, like there's so many different departments and um, jobs that you can get out of it. So I just figured that was a good a good thing to start and they kind of take you through each department um through your degree so you kind of get a, a feel for all of it and you can figure it out that way yeah do you think you'll do a postgrad or a master's after this one i have no idea <laughs> after that one i <laughs> when i finish yeah i'm not sure yeah usually when you're studying you're like hell no and then when you finish you're like oh probably should yeah <laughs> yeah might yeah. might turn yeah. um what was the biggest lesson that you've learnt um, during your swimming career? Hang on, I've just lost your screen. Oh, that's all good. How do I get it back? Oh, got it. Uh, biggest lesson, sorry? Yeah, biggest lesson you've learnt uh, through your swimming career. Um, when I was younger, I kind of, um, like, you know how you get little niggles and stuff and, I'd kind of always be too scared to tell Sean 
and I was just a bit worried that I'd get in trouble and have to stop and like I just didn't want to yeah I just never wanted to tell him so I kind of pushed through a lot more than I should have when I was little when things were hurting and that's how injuries got worse and worse and I was just yeah a bit too scared to to speak up so I think that's the biggest lesson is like if I had to just had the guts to say something early we could have gotten on top of it whereas I just let it go too long and then it just ends up in a much bigger thing than it needs to be yeah you had uh did you have surgery on your ankle last year yeah yeah uh, yeah what was that from years ago um I had a like a little extra bone in my um ankle so it was at the back so every time I kicked it was just like getting caught and it was kind of breaking away so they just had to get rid of that extra bone <laughs> god was it painful when you were swimming yeah it was it was right before um world short course in china so 2018 i think that was so in the lead up to that i was kind of just trying not to kick as much as i could um and then i made the team so that was pretty cool but then um i think we flew back from china from that trip and then the next day i was in surgery to get it done before christmas so yeah, that was wow. Well, yeah. And is how different is it now? Um, it's just less painful. Don't really notice anything else. But yeah, it's been pretty good. I hurt the same foot um, running too much during COVID, but that's a different <laughs> different spot again. <laughs> yeah, swimmers and running typically doesn't go well together. Swimmers aren't runners. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the toughest set that you've ever done? Um, I think the three K time trial is pretty tough. <laughs> I feel like it takes yep. me a long time to recover from that. Um, but another one we were doing just before COVID, um, we had six one short rest. Um, I think we're doing them on like one fifteen straight into six ones best average. Um, and we had three rounds of that, and we didn't get any swim off after the six ones best average. The short rest six ones were our were our swim down, so that was that's probably up there with one of the hardest ones that I can remember. I feel like when I was little, we did like crazy sets that I just can't even remember. But now that I'm a bit older, it's a bit harder to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, sets when you're younger, typically like 10 fours. Yeah. I am. Yes. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every third one max or something like just, yeah. Crazy stuff. Uh, was your dolphins experience for both times what you'd expected? Um, yeah, it was. I uh, I expected it, it to be a little bit more scary with the older guys, if that makes sense. I, yeah. I kind of thought I'd be a little bit more intimidated by them, but they were all just, especially on the first one, just really um, welcoming and just, yeah, caring, like looking up, looking after us, all of us um, newbies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it was really good. Who, who were your roommates uh, for both the trips if you can remember i had um arnie on the first one yeah that was our both of our first team so that was that was pretty cool and then the second one was abby harkin oh yeah right <laughs> <laughs> they're both losers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh do you have a favorite teammate both in your squad and on the australian dolphins team um <laughs> in my squad can I say all of them <laughs> you can say all of them <laughs> no I'd, I'd probably say Alex in our squad just because we've probably um suffered through the most main sets together we kind of yeah do the do the hard bits and then there's the sprinters and the other guys so we've we've done quite a lot together I'd probably say here if I had to pick one but yeah. they're all they're all really <laughs> <laughs> um and then on the Australian team I'd uh, probably have to say my two roomies. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. had a lot of fun both times. It was, they were good. If you had to pick one of the two, who would you pick? <laughs> Are you going to tell them? <laughs> oh, I'll tell them to watch this. <laughs> no, nah, I couldn't pick. Couldn't split them. <laughs> They're both the same. All right. <laughs> um, who was the first person that you first told when you first made the team and, and how did you celebrate? Um, I, so I made it when short course was in Brisbane um, and my 
parents came and watched me race that night and then they left and went home <laughs> just thinking that <laughs> another meet which is fine um so yeah I rang them to tell them first as soon as Sean had come and come and told me because yeah they'd left so they were a little bit shocked that like it was in Brisbane they could have stayed and they could have watched but that's okay so yeah they were the first ones and um yeah I don't think I did much to celebrate just just rest just, yeah. <laughs> ready to get up and race again yeah, well, it wouldn't have been long before you'd have to leave for that one, wasn't it? No, it was only, yeah, it wasn't long at all. Because I think um, short course would have been end of October. And then the team was, yeah, start of December-ish. So. Yeah, that's a pretty short turnaround. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, about a month maybe, yeah. Yeah. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, Favourite food before and after training? Oh, um, before anything that will just wake me up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, any kind of snacks that we have in the cupboard, anything that's there, fruit, banana. Um, after I've been having scrambled eggs like every day. I've yeah. never been an egg person until recently, so it's a bit weird. But yeah, scrambled eggs, bit of cheese. Yeah, don't you, geez, don't you get over eggs? Like, I feel like when I have them like two days in a row, I can't have them for two weeks. Yeah, well, that was me. I could have them like once a month and I just hated them. I like, couldn't even look at them. And now I'm having it like every day. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, not sick of it yet. Yeah, you'll get a point where we probably won't eat eggs ever again. Yeah, after no, that. I won't have them for the rest of my life. <laughs> Do you have a favorite uh, go to junk food? Chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I have a massive sweet tooth, but I love chocolate. Any yeah. Type of chocolate. I think Arnie said the exact same thing. So I know <laughs> why you guys get on so well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, athlete that you look up to and, and why. So this doesn't really have to be a swimmer in particular, but um, is there anyone that you've kind of always looked up to or that you've newly started looking up to? Um. When I was younger, it was definitely always Bronte Barrett. Um, I just always really admired like how humble she was and how um, just how she held herself just all the time. I have a few things signed by her when I was younger. She kind of did the free sale events that I was that I was doing. Um, but yeah, like everyone who's even in other sports, everyone, I'll just like admire them and just anything that comes up on Facebook or Instagram videos and stuff, I'll just watch them. I just love to know how they think and what they, the little things that they do that people don't know about, you know, those little videos that come up and yeah, just everyone. <laughs> what about on the teams uh, that you went on? So both 2016 and 2018, was there someone uh, in particular on that team that you'd be, just be like, wow. I'm on this Australian team with them. Um, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> this one. <laughs> Probably um, Dan, just because of, like, especially on that first trip, I kind of found out all the stuff that he'd been through in his life. And it was just, like, really inspiring to see where he was now. And he was definitely one. And I think because I was rooming with Arnie and him and Arnie were close at that point. Um, so, yeah, I just got to hear a lot from him and he was just, yeah, really supportive and really shared a lot about um, his experiences and and what to expect and things like that. And, yeah, he was pretty inspirational. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's like when you just look at an athlete who's overcome so much, like, yeah, mm. he's pretty inspiring. Amazing, yeah. Um, best advice that you've been given as an athlete and if you can remember who would it be by? Um, it's, I got told something by a coach on a team that I don't want to say who it was. Yeah. It wasn't my coach, a different coach on a team. Yep. Um, and it was like, it was a little bit harsh at the time, um, but he pretty much just said, no one cares, keep going. Um, and I feel like I've really 
um, kind of taken that with me through my swimming and I know it doesn't really apply in real life I know there's plenty of people that care about me and love me and in my life but in swimming it's really helpful especially when you're like feeling sorry for yourself and you're just having those days where you're so sore and you're so tired and you just you just want to break but like the complaining to other people like they don't really care if you're complaining that you're sore and tired like so just shut up and keep going like it's really helped me get through those harder days and those harder sets so I think that's probably the main thing that has stuck with me just in swimming that yeah just keep going just shut up and keep going <laughs> does Sean give you any uh words of wisdom um he does he has a lot of stories that he um <laughs> that he brings up every now and then he's got a lot of different ones that I've heard over the years that um most of them have kind of a that inspirational kind of um, storyline and to pump you up or to to pick you up after the <laughs> after the the bad swims or the hard times. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite swimming achievement that you've that you've um, achieved? Um, like you you won a few medals um, at at short course worlds. Would any of those be uh, your favorite achievement? And if so, which one? Yeah, those medal winning relays were, they were up there, especially the four by two, because um, we were in China and China was in that race and like the crowd was just going crazy for them. And like, I know we didn't win, but to get a medal, it was a little bit unexpected for us as a team. That was pretty cool. Just standing up there for the first time on that kind of stage and just kind of looking around and yeah, that was pretty, um, pretty unforgettable, but also making my first senior team because I just missed out on making the Olympic team that year, a couple of months earlier. Yeah. Which was like devastating. I was really confident for that and I only just missed it, but I think it was 0.2 in the end. Um, so to kind of come back from that and make the team after that, I felt like I had a point to prove and, and I did that. So that was something I was pretty proud of. Yeah. Yeah. So out of the two trips, you'd say Windsor would be, uh most memorable experience i'd say so yeah just being the first one and yeah experiencing it all for the first time the snow <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah have you had uh any major setbacks during your swimming career and how'd you overcome overcome them um yeah i've had a fair few injuries um there's yeah shoulders they took a while that was like six months of kick which was that was pretty tough um I was doing like vertical kick for the whole session with a weight belt on just days on end like that was that was tough to get through that one um and then when I had my foot done there was a lot of pull involved in that it's kind of the opposite <laughs> um but yeah I just kind of like I feel like when you have that goal like I just really want to make an Olympic team and I feel like when you've got that goal um you've just always got to find a way to get through it like you've just got to keep pushing knowing that that there is the other side like you'll get there eventually if you I never wanted to kind of give up during those times because you don't want to give up when something like that's happening like you don't want that's not how you want it to end yeah so just having that goal is just really what you're pushing for yeah so going through uh both your injuries of shoulders and ankles um, and doing a shitload of kick and pull. Uh, are you better at kick or pull? Oh, at the... Oh, I don't know. I'm not really good at either. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really <laughs> ideal when you injure yourself. Yeah. Yeah. When I was doing all the kick, my kick improved a lot, which is good. So it should. Um but yeah, then I had to do all the pulls so the kick kind of fell away and yeah, I don't know. I'd probably say better at kick than pull. Yeah. I don't really like either. I just like the plain normal swimming. <laughs> yeah, there's no Olympic events for kick and pull. So no, I mean, sweet. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what do you like to do in your downtime? Uh, watch TV, TV shows. I've um, just started Friends because apparently that was really bad that I'd never seen friends from start to finish. <laughs> On the same, yeah. <laughs> just started that. Um, but yeah, anything where I'm just kind of, can just switch off and just not think and just relax and yeah, TV's 
always pretty good. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, or it might have even been just like a year ago, um, were you starting a business with your mum for candles? Is yeah. that still going? Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So we started that um, after Com Games trials and I just missed that team again. So that was kind of something to um, take my mind off it during my during the break after Com Games trials. So, yeah, we just I don't even really know what started it. I think we saw some kind of demonstration on better homes and gardens we're like oh let's make a couple of candles for ourselves and then next minute it's turned into this whole big <laughs> whole big um business but yeah it's been been going really well since COVID actually so yeah, that's good markets on the weekend and selling online so yeah yeah what's the name of your store uh pip and me it's named pip and me okay all right sweet and you just do it on the weekends for at the markets but then at home during the week yes yeah so just the any orders we get online during the week just make them up send them off or go out and deliver them if they're local and yeah wow okay what's what's the website uh www.pipandme pip p-i-p-a-n-d-m-i.com okay so all right we'll do something up for that gifts or <laughs> <laughs> And, oh, and you just do all, all candles? Yeah. Oh, we've got um, like diffusers and um, melts. You know, the little yep. melt warmers, you can stick the little cubes on top and. Yeah. yeah. And okay. Yeah. All right. Sweet. So, um, yeah. And any advice that you could give your younger self today? Um, probably that, well, just that it's worth it. Like it's, it does get better and it is worth it in the end. All of those grueling sets, all of those long, hard days that you just, you wonder if it, if you are ever going to get there. And like, I haven't even got to my kind of ultimate goal yet, but just the two um, short course scenes that I have been on were, were just, yeah, you kind of get there and you're like, this is why I do it. Like, this is, this is what I'm training for. So yeah, I'd probably just say that it, 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 yeah, it gets better and it is worth it in the end. Yeah. Oh, great advice. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks so much uh, for coming on. We're, I know we were running a little bit for time, but we're all good, which is, which is nice. Um, we finished on time. Uh, yeah. So thanks again uh, for coming on Carla and um, have a great rest of the day and great weekend. And thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. No worries at all. No worries at all. All right. See you next time.